Well, good morning and welcome to the Men's Leadership Network. We're glad you could join us. I want to say a special welcome to all the viewers at online this morning uh, and everyone meeting in Cool Springs at Bricks or in Nolensville at Highway 55. Thank you for joining us. The format's going to be the same this semester. We're going to go for about 30, 35 minutes, and at that time we'll pause and take some questions. So if you've got questions this morning and want to get them in for Scott or for Jeff, you can do that two ways. One way is you can tweet those in at leadership underscore net, or you can email them in to questions at mensleadershipnetwork.com. This morning, we're excited to kick off a new semester of the Men's Leadership Network with our special guest, Scott Lehman, the founder and president of In His Grip Ministries. In 1997, Scott committed his life to Jesus Christ. A year later, he went back to school to become a U.S. Golf Teaching Federation certified teaching, teaching professional. That same year, he combined his love for golf and his passion for reaching men for Christ when he founded In His Grip Golf a Christian sports program for men designed with a vision to provide a first-class golf experience to improve his game on and off the course. Today, Scott has hosted more than 275 in his grip golf events across the country, connecting men who have a passion for the game with the message of the gospel. He is the co-author of the Master's Grip devotional and contributor to the Golfer's Bible, and he has recently released his own book, More Than a Game, Finding Life's Answers Through Golf. In his free time, he enjoys golfing, being a soccer dad, and being intentional about spending quality time with family and friends. Please join me in welcoming Scott Lehman. Scott. Thanks, guys. Great to be here. Appreciate oh, it, Pastor. Really, so glad you're here, Scott. It's a privilege it's and an it's honor. Great. Yeah. Hey, tell us, your story is amazing. T tell us a little bit about your life before you met Christ. Well, I grew up in a little town in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. about an hour south of Green Bay. So, yes, I'm a huge Packer fan. <laughs> That's and good to ask that. It's in my blood. Uh, but I grew up in a very normal home. Uh, my mom and dad had a sister. And the influence that I had with my father still today uh, goes to the depth of my heart. Mm. And he was my encourager. He was my best friend. And uh, he introduced me to the game of golf on April 12th. 1969. Now, most of the guys here weren't even born back then, but he brought home a Northwestern 7-iron, uh, Wilson K-28 uh, sleeve of golf balls, and we had about three acres back in Ripon, Wisconsin. And he said, Scott, let me introduce you to Lehman Country Club. And he had six holes all throughout the yard with an eight-inch clay flower pot with a little orange flag, you know, in it. And he took me to the first hole, and he said, Scott, I've got I got two rules. I'm like, all right, Dad, I mean, I'm eight. You know, what am I going to do? And he said, you have to play the holes in succession, one through six, but you also have to keep the shots head high or lower. He goes, I don't want anything over the garage or, you know, anywhere around the house. And for the first two years, I was very obedient. When I turned 10, I became very confident. Yeah. And I'm like, why go around the house when I can actually go over, over the house? <laughs> My dad came home pretty much daily about 4.30. He was very intentional to be home to spend quality time mm. uh, with me and my sister before dinner. And this one afternoon, it was time to take the shot of my life. And it was about 4.30, I'm in the front of the house, I'm going over to that back pin position. And when I got to the half point of my back swing, I heard this beep beep from my dad's truck, and I still went through with the shot caught it a little thin because it went right through my sister's bedroom window and just shattered. I don't know about you guys, but do you laugh? Do you cry? And I just dropped the club and started running to the backyard. We have a big John Deere tire tractor back there filled with sand. I dove in it still not knowing what to do. But let me tell you, Pastor Jeff, when you hear your first name, your middle name, <laughs> and your last name coming from your dad, you better start crying because yeah. he means business. And he came tearing around the back of the house with Scott Nelson Lehman, where are you? And I don't know what happened. From the point around the back of the house to the sand trap, but when he walked up to me and I'm just crying and saying, Dad, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mm. He knelt down on one knee and said, son, I forgive you come out of there. He dusted me off and he walked me around to the front of the house to the scene of the crime and he said, son, I have a message for you. Guys, I believe this message could be for one of you today. In life, you will hit bad shots. 
But remember this son never stops swinging. Mm. That was almost 50 years ago. Wow. And it still speaks to the depth of my heart. Wow. Praise God. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the impact of a dad, you know, that the things that we say today are going to have a lasting impact on our kids and Absolutely. on future generations. That's yeah. so powerful. Yeah. Well, tell us because you grew up, and, but you didn't really walk with the Lord, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, but then something happened and you met the Lord, and mm -hmm. tell us about that. Yeah, I grew up in a home where church was kind of on Sunday, mm -hmm. and it was a very traditional experience. It was more about the ritual of that versus maybe a relationship mm -hmm. with God. And, and so I ran from God when I got into college and just kept running uh, away from Him, actually. And then in 1997, uh, I got the dream uh, envelope in the mail. I got four tickets to the Masters. <laughs> And for a golfer, that, that's pretty much the pinnacle of a bucket list. Mm. And my hardest decision was who the other three guys, you know, that I'm going to take. But I just took the three guys to my wedding party because I'd been married about two years. Mm -hmm. And we went down, and I don't know if any of you guys remember, 1997, there's a young 21-year-old that just came onto the scene. And when we watched him navigate the fairways and the greens of Augusta National, it was unbelievable. And the sound off his driver was like a cannon exploding, hitting at 300 yards and more. And, but he controlled the greens and putted them like it was in his own backyard. He was so comfortable at 21 at the Masters. And that year in 97, Tiger wins not by one shot and not even by t two shots, but he wins by 12. And if you remember, his front nine on the first day, he shot a 40 which pretty much takes you out of any golf tournament. You're four over already. In the back nine, he shoots 30, and then goes on to win 12. So the message in that is it's not how you start, mm. but it's how you finish. And when I got home, I'm flying high. I mean, this is the, the most awesome experience. And I fly back to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, walk in the front door to my wife of two years to hear these words, Scott, I'm out of this marriage. I'm gone. And that was my reality. I had lost my dream job about six months prior. And I'm aimlessly just going through life. I'm still spending a lot of money to make sure the world knows I'm successful. I got caught up in the world's definition of success, about money and about prestige and about building your name and getting things that you think are going to make you happy. And I was so empty. And it was the first time I looked to God and said, I need help. And the journey began. Came across a little book called In His Grip about golf and life. And I came home and asked my wife, uh, do we have a Bible? And she goes, why in the world do you need a Bible? I said, there's a few verses in this little book that I have. And she goes, go check the bookshelf. But Scott, if you find one, you'll probably have to dust it off. Mm -hmm. And I had all the sales books on the bookshelf. I had all the self-help books. And at the bottom was a box with a Bible. And I did have to dust it off. And the Lord led me to two verses in Proverbs, and I wear them on my wrist. <laughs> um, they're really etched onto the tablet of my heart because I'm searching for purpose. I'm sure searching for meaning. And it says to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. And that spoke volumes to me. Mm. So every day I would read uh, the devotional in, in His grip, and find the verse, and just start talking to God, wow. which I know today now is prayer. You yeah. Just have a conversation with Him. Wow. And the Lord started to, uh, to do a work uh, within me, and I started to find a church mm -hmm. and heard about the, the good news that Jesus actually went to the cross for me, mm -hmm. which I could not believe that He would do that. And I could be forgiven for all the bad shots that I hit. The Bible calls it a sin. Yeah. And then I could be right with God and start this personal journey with Him. It didn't happen right away for me, Pastor. It happened months later that one night in my, my, my house, I just fell to my knees and gave my life to Jesus and yeah. mm. asked Him to be the Lord of my life. And I went to my Pastor John to share the news with him. And, and he said, you need to get with guys like at that table on Saturday mornings to be discipled. I said, Scott, you're an infant in your faith. You need to start growing, you know, as a Christ follower. 
And these guys, we'd meet 6.30 Saturday mornings, and they immediately kind of said, tell me about your family life, how's your marriage and everything. And I'm like, my marriage is crumbling. And one of the guys said, um, not on our watch. Mm. We're going to stand in the gap with you, Scott, and we're going to be on our knees praying for your wife's heart. And from this day forward, you need to go back and serve her as Christ did not come to be served, but he came to serve. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, what does that even mean? He said, start helping out with the cooking or the dishes or laundry. I'm like, my mom did all that back in Wisconsin. That, that's not what I grew up with. And uh, one of the guys just called me out and said, Leslie's not your mama, she's your wife. Mm. You need to go back and serve her. So it was very awkward. I went back and started folding towels, and she came in the bedroom and said, what are you doing? I said, I'm folding towels. And she goes, well, if you do that, I like them folded in thirds, because she's very organized. <laughs> and I said, teach me, you know, show me. And I think she was just kind of seeing as this really for real. And every Saturday I'd go back and said, I got nothing. She, you know, there's just nothing there. She's so angry and, and uh, she um, won't come to church and any of that. So it doesn't matter. Just keep serving her unconditionally. And it was months later that on a Sunday morning that she typically would sleep in. She said, Scott, can you wait a few more minutes? I want to come to church with you. And I asked her why. She goes, something's going on with you. I, I want what you got. I'm coming to church. Mm -hmm. And it was a few weeks later that um, Pastor John asked us to just, just bow our heads in prayer and just think of one person that we could lift up to, to, that they would come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And I could not believe it. They did an altar call. And when I looked up, my wife, she was a... She was at the front of the altar giving her life to Jesus. Mm. And now I look back that we're now married 22 years and I don't know where some of the guys are here or maybe some of the uh, guys listening online that they may have that message of, of their wife's leaving the marriage. Not on our watch. Mm -mm. There is so much power in prayer. God can move mountains. He can move on our wife's heart. He can move on our son, our daughters. And we all face the challenges and the trials of life. But if we literally just lay it at the foot of the cross and say, God, I need help. Mm. Please move on this person's heart. He will. Yeah. And it doesn't happen in our time. Amen. It's his time. It's all him. Mm -hmm. It's all him. It's only God who can change a heart, you know? Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. I love that, Scott. Praise God. Mm -hmm. So what's God done in your life since? I mean... So when I shared with a pastor of what happened and what's going on with these guys, he's like, Scott, I need you in the game. And I'm like, I want to be in the game. I go, what does that mean? And he said, well, we need you to serve at the church. You know, here's a list of things. And it went from the nursery to sing in the choir to I'm like, I'm checked out. That, that's not me. And he goes, well, what would get you excited? And uh, I said, golf ministry. He goes, golf and ministry? And he goes, I go, I have a background in doing tournaments and I think we could do one. And he goes, do it. He goes, not to fundraise though, I want to reach men outside this church. Yeah. So our first tournament was 1998, uh, a year later. We had 104 guys show up and 50 of them were from the church, 54 guests. And I shared a very raw story yeah. of coming to faith in Christ. And, it was so humbling. Uh, the pastor closed with a prayer and gave guys an opportunity to commit their lives, and four guys raised their hand wow, to say God. they needed Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Mm. So that began the journey of in his grip. A lot of guys I've, I've met said, gosh, God, you've been around a couple of years now. I'm like, yeah, a couple of years. The first term was 1998. Uh, we did it for eight years in our church to just really, I think, God put us through that training of doing tournaments and leagues and retreats, small groups all around golf. And then I went back to school uh, in 98 to become a certified teaching pro. So when you help guys with their game, you really kind of have them for life because they'll trust you at that point. And I would just share my in the script story with them and guys would come to know Christ, they'd come to church, the families would come to church. And there's an amazing statistic uh, that I got uh, through the Promise Keepers era, yeah, yeah, yeah. that if you reach a child first, three and a half percent of the time the family will come to know Christ. 
And if you reach the lady or the wife first, 22% of the time the family will follow. Mm. Guys, this is staggering. If you reach the man first, 93% of the time the family will follow. Wow. Our target is men. Mm -hmm. That was the Lord. So that training ground, you know, with Pastor John and the church yeah. back in the Midwest um, brought us to a point of getting out of the boat and, and walking on water down Amen. here in Nashville, Amen. which was 07. And we had one tournament that year. And the Lord then uh, took over the reins. Amen. That's all I can say. In, mm. in the last 10 years, we've had 216 golf tournaments, uh, 18,000 men plus have played, and 726 men have committed their lives to Christ. And I give God all the glory, Amen. all the praise, all the honors, His. He just allowed me to be a part of it. God, I love it. I mean, I just praise God, you know? Hmm. I mean, back from that moment of being on your knees to just total surrender to say, God, what do you want to do for me? And hmm. here's my marriage, here's my life, and to watch what God will do. Hmm. I mean, and I, that's powerful. Even 20 years, fast forward, uh, I sense the Lord still asking me to do that today. Amen. Just hmm. daily, God, I give you everything. You know, I give you my marriage, uh, I give you our son. I give you the ministry. It's hard as guys to feel like we've got to wrap our arms around or, or make something happen. Mm -hmm. But the more I let go and say, God, this is yours, it is humbling what he'll do. Yeah, yeah. And just allows us to be a part of it. Mm. Well, you mentioned that about your son. Tell us about that journey because that, that's a pretty powerful story of what God was doing in your life as well. Mm. Yeah, Leslie and I, we couldn't have children. Mm. Uh, just our our answer was, it just wasn't part of the Lord's plan. And a few years ago, we did a, a rocking chair test, which basically, I turned 50 six years ago, and Leslie and I did a rocking chair test where you picture yourself, you're in your 90s, you're in a rocking chair on the front porch of a cabin overlooking the lake, and you're just holding hands rocking. And you stop and ask each other, when you look back at your life, do you have any regrets? And when Leslie asked me, I said, I wanted to be a dad so bad. Mm. Huge regret for me. I said, Leslie, what about you? And she goes, I know I'm 48, but I still want to be a mommy. She goes, I think we ought to revisit adoption. I'm like, do you think God is going to have us be the new Abraham and Sarah story of today? <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously, I'm 50. And she goes, let's just, let's just pray about it. Yeah. So I went to the Legends just down the road to just hit some balls, kind of a normal morning. And a gentleman came out by the name of Buddy Harston. He was the golf coach at Lipscomb and is now the director of instruction at Legends. And he said, Scott, this is your Innis Grip truck? And I said, uh, yes, sir. And he goes, tell me a little bit about the ministry. And I just shared my story with him. And he goes, do you have family? I said, yeah. I said, That's you know, I have Leslie as a wife. And he goes, any kids? I said, no kiddos. This really wasn't part of the Lord's plan. He goes, I know we just met today, but have you ever thought about adoption? And I'm like, God, seriously, now he's getting in my grill. <laughs> and I just met him. I said, yeah, recently. And he goes, what's holding you back? Age? I'm like, Lord, this is getting a little bit too personal. I said, yeah, I'm 50. He goes, Scott, I know we just met, but that's not going to work with me. I'm 57. I'm adopting a 10-year-old boy from Africa. What's your excuse? Wow. Can't use age with God. Go read Abraham and Sarah. 90 years old when they had kids. I went back home to Leslie and said, we, we got to start praying. She goes, okay, about what? I said, about a family. She goes, whose family? I said, our family. <laughs> Something happened today. And when we started the journey, um, Stephen Curtis Chapman hosted a seminar on adoption just to find out more information. And, and when we went... Uh, we knew he left as a mommy and daddy to be. Mm. And it was going to be about a nine to 12 month journey. Uh, it was two and a half years before uh, we could bring Micah home. So we brought him home when he was six. He's now nine. Um, <laughs> if you want a good fitness program at mid 50s, adopt a boy that's born to run. <laughs> he will wear you out. He's highly gifted. Um, and the cool thing is on Mother's Day this year, uh, Micah committed his life to Jesus. Oh, man. I'm telling you, he's going to be a game changer. He's going to be a world changer. He, he is just on fire to tell people about God. I love it. And wow, thank you, Lord. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite part about being a dad? 
Uh, just watching him grow, mm. and the thing now is, um, you know, my dad was, my dad passed away last Thanksgiving. Mm. So he's 86 years old, 61 years of marriage, a phenomenal example for me to follow. And now to see his legacy speak through me when I say, Micah, keep swinging. Mm. I know that shot didn't go you wanted, but just keep, keep swinging, keep kicking, keep getting back up. It's my dad <laughs> speaking through me. And so just to encourage him on his journey, uh, parenting is hard. <laughs> there's days I'm like, Lord, I don't get it. I, there's nothing I'm doing that's even helping this child. Mm -hmm. But the Lord reminds me, it, it's not, he's not my child, it's the Lord's child. Mm. I, I'm to steward him, I'm to guide him, to encourage him, and just continue to ask him for that wisdom and, and that discernment. Yeah. But I absolutely love being a daddy in the back nine of my life. You know, yeah. 56 years old, I feel like I'm in my mid-30s and just chasing after this boy in the backyard. I love it. I just love being engaged. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. I think you, you just learned this whole new aspect of God's love. No you doubt. Know, once you have a child no because yeah. you're like, they really can't do anything for me, but mm -hmm. I would give my life for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would, you know, take a bullet or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and to think about that unconditional love that God has for us. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. It's taking my relationship with my Heavenly Father to a whole nother level oh, yeah. of depth just to be a dad. And, yeah. And, and, Praise God. Yeah. Well, Scott, God's using you within his grip all over, you know, to make such an impact. What's your dream? What do you continue to see God doing in, in his grip? Yeah, it's now at a point where the Lord is really asking me just to let go of it and, mm. and in a sense, give it away. So we're looking at uh, a big goal to set up 100 cities uh, that will uh, use it in his grip to impact the hearts and lives of men. Yeah. And we've also taken uh, the logo and taken golf off for the future. It's going to be in his grip. So it'll be golf, it'll be outdoors, it'll be connecting in men where their passion is. And uh, that was the beauty of just a few days ago with, um, uh, with Mike Fisher and, and with Austin. Mm -hmm. Uh, we went down to Alabama and we bass fished and we shot skeet and we golfed and I just put up an example of a camo hat and the guys like when can I get it you know it's um, just meeting where their passion is mm. and that's where we want to line in this grip into the hearts of men yeah and so we are starting here in Nashville love it and we've got ten cities laid out of how we uh, feel we can help from our experience and our goal is to reach two million men. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Yeah. What, 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 what keeps you going? What keeps you just so passionate about Christ and his call in your life? Yeah, there's a, um, a great verse in Proverbs. I think it's just a book um, with great wisdom. Yeah. And you can apply it in your family and your business and personal life. And I've, I hope the address is right. You know, guys can check on this. Proverbs 11.25 is uh, you refresh others, you too are refreshed. Mm. And just to encourage one guy just one mm. and just know that we all face trials we all face tribulation or um, trials and tribulations and but just encourage them on their journey and to watch what that one encouraging word can do yeah and there's just such a need in this world right now oh yeah you know it may not be any of the guys here or even listening but there's a lot of your buddies that are living life on an island mm. They are in isolation thinking they're only ones dealing with this addiction to pornography. They're only ones dealing with this broken marriage. There's only ones dealing with no purpose, no meaning in life. That is a lie from yeah. Satan. Yeah. And when we can bring guys into community, even if it's as iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another, yeah. just start here. Mm -hmm. And if a guy can be encouraged in that relationship and a trust is built, that's when we can start growing in a relationship with the Lord. And as we pour into others, that it just splashes back on us. Oh, yeah. And so if guys haven't been mentoring anybody yet, I would just encourage them, please jump into that lake or that pond of mentorship. It, it is a huge blessing, and you will get back a hundredfold of yeah. what you pour in. I love because you've got this acronym, like, with golf, mm. right? And, and you mm. challenge guys every day to golf. Talk about that because I think that impacts our personal walk with the Lord in such a powerful way. Yeah, on Friday mornings, I meet with three young 30-year-olds. Uh, I, I guess they could be my sons. And basically, I've been challenging them this year to read the book of Proverbs in a chapter every day. Mm. And then we text each other a verse that just stands out. 
So I have them golf it, and basically it's God's word, just one verse a day, and just write that verse. Uh, you know, I know we're not good at journaling, but just write it down. O is for observation. You know, what is God saying in that verse? And the L is life application. Well, how do I apply that into my life today? And the F is finish that, that prayer by cementing that verse to your heart. So it's G-O-L-F. I'm, I'm a pretty simple guy. I've got to keep it in layman's language. No pun intended. And, um, and so that's what we're teaching them is just, just tee it up every morning. Have your tea time with the Lord. Have a set time. If it's 5.30, if it's 6, just have that set time. And then just golf a verse a day. One verse. One. Just you know what I simple. love about that is it, it, it's simple because sometimes mm. we make it so complex mm -hmm. and we think, oh, I got to go and, you know, have 45 minutes and where do I start, you know? Yeah. And, and, but I love that, that one verse and that G-O-L-F and submit that into your heart. Yeah. How has the mentorship, has that been going? I mean, how did you get that started and how is that going? Yeah, it started um, back in 1998, mm. about 20 years ago. When I came to Christ through, I would say the catalyst was that little book called In His Grip. Mm -hmm. I called Thomas Nelson to say, hey, there's a little Jay Countryman on the, on the binder. Does that stand for somebody? And said, yeah, it's Jack Countryman. I said, is he still alive? He said, yeah, he's 70 years old. He still works here. Uh, could I go, could I talk to him? So I got connected to Mr. Countryman and this is just how God works. Jack had just gotten back from a retreat with John Eldridge up in the mountains of Colorado. And on the top of the mountain, Jack had two things that God shared with him. One is that Jack would live a very long life, very fulfilling life. He's now 87, still works at Thomas Nelson, four days a week. And the second thing is, when you go back home to Nashville, I'm gonna send a young man to you. You need to mentor him. It was me. He's been my mentor for 19 years. And it was just such a honor um, that God would choose this man of wisdom and, and of great experience of life. Not perfect, but great experience is great wisdom. And then I got this heart to pour into young men. And I, God brought a 17-year-old, hmm. Chad, and who's now uh, 35, 36. And I just started to meet with him weekly, and he came to know Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And, and I just always have had this heart for, for young men. Um, 20 years later, those young men are now in their 30s, <laughs> which is crazy. Um, but it's my heartbeat. Mm. I, I really want to walk and show them that life isn't about being perfect. I mean, if you sit down with my wife, Leslie, right here, she, will, she can share some good experience. I'm not a perfect husband by any means. But with Christ in me, I know that I can improve. I know I can you know, continue to strive to become all that I need to be for the Lord. Wow. And so it started with Jack pouring into me and then just being a vehicle to be able to pour into other young men. That's really the future for us is a wide funnel. We kind of reach a lot of guys for wide in, in media, but then we have a membership opportunity within this group and then mentoring is at the bottom of the funnel. It's pretty simple, yeah. but this is where I see life really happening in the mentorship uh, arena. I love that. For sure. and, and you put that into practice. I mean, every Friday you meet with some guys and mm -hmm. it's just a part of who you are. Mm -hmm. And I think for everybody who calls themselves a Christ follower, there ought to be people mm -hmm. in our lives that we're mentoring and pouring into. Yeah. yeah. So how do, you, uh, how do you talk to guys who get caught up where you were mm -hmm. in success, money, and running after the things of the world, whether it's masters or anything, mm -hmm. but putting those things before mm -hmm. Christ and before their marriage? But how do you, what do you say to men in, in that world? It's challenging. Yeah. For sure. The world is a very, very strong media vehicle. And they'll continue to put success up here and, and build your own castle. And what I'm finding with men is they've been doing that for many years, especially yeah. my age. If you get over 40, I kind of relate it to you're making the turn to the back nine of your life. And they've been climbing this corporate ladder of success. And when they reach that 40, kind of that half time, they realize their ladder is leaned up against the wrong building. Mm. They're not happy. Their marriage is crumbling. They have no purpose. They have no meaning. But if we can kind of go from building your own castle to building his kingdom, mm -hmm. joy, meaning, 
purpose, getting out of bed, Lord, please connect me with one guy today. That, yeah, that's the way I want to finish strong, yeah. is just being available for his service. It, the wor- I'm telling you guys, the world, much of it is authored by the evil one. Mm. He knows what our selfish flesh wants. I battle it every day. Mm-hmm. I need guys like you. I need guys like this for mm-hmm. accountability to, to say, Scott, you're kind of veering over here. You know, you're traveling a lot. You know, is Micah okay? Is, what about Leslie? And just keep me in check yeah. because I need that. Yeah. And once you get into that community, it, the truth is spoken. There's nothing better mm-hmm. to do life than just be able to have guys you can lean into and, um, you know, Austin, I love the time we spent this past, you know, three days last week. And, mm-hmm. and with, I just love doing life with guys that aren't afraid to call you out yeah. to help you to become even better, you know, for the Lord to, to use here on earth. Mm. And we all need that. We all need it. Yeah. And yeah. Um, guys, love on your pastor. You know, it, a lot of times I think, mm-hmm. Jeff, un, I don't do that out of disrespect, disrespect mm-hmm. of, mm-hmm. to call you Jeff as a brother in Christ. Mm-hmm. But a lot of guys... We'll put the pastor up on a pedestal. Mm-hmm. He's perfect. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, everything is good. And, and I know that um, we're guys. Yeah. You yeah. know, we'll, they'll struggle. But, yeah. man, and we can kind of do life together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, that's I'm where so it's thankful. at. Yeah. Yeah. I need those guys in my life calling me out, mm-hmm. you know. It makes such a difference. We all do. So you've got a book, and then you've got some other things that have really helped guys grow, whether you play golf or not. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. talk about that, just the way you're helping resource guys as Yeah, well. so Mr. Countryman pulled me aside a couple of years ago and he said, hey, on those meetings with young men, what are you teaching them? Like, yeah. um, you know, I go, well, all the wisdom you shared with me these last, you know, few years. So it's basically anything from, you know, who's your coach? You know, who are you going to to really get wisdom? And, and who's in your foursome? Because the one thing I've learned over the years is whoever you do life with, like your three best friends, I can really tell you where you're going to be in 10 years Mm. by looking at their marriages, by looking at the way they handle finances. And through the years, I've I've needed to get some new friends. We will conform to the guys we hang out with, good or bad. Yeah. It will just happen. And so I just share life, you know, best practices, try to help the young men of, don't go down this road. I've been there. I've done that about lost my marriage by going after the almighty dollar. And um, so that's really the more than a game. Yeah. It's just um, some of the life answers God's taught me. And I just want to pour that back into that younger generation. I love that. Mm-hmm. I really do. And I just encourage all the guys, you know, yeah. go online, get the book, you know, find some people to mentor and to pour into mm-hmm. because that's where your life comes alive, you know? Yeah, there's no doubt. And we try to set it up where it's like, well, I don't know how to do this, that yeah. there's, you know, five or six questions after each chapter. And, and what I find myself doing is more facilitating just with the guys, just helping, you know, guide the conversation or ask a question. And guys, what do you think? Yeah. And if you just get the guys kind of talking and allow them to share, well, this is what's going on with, with me now. And, um, and just give them a safe place that they can trust. Yeah. Um, they'll take time with guys, but yeah. once that's built, um, it's powerful. Open up. It's very powerful. Yeah. yeah. Who's in your foursome? I love that, mm. you know, because who are those guys closest to you? Mm. Yeah. Critical. Oh, it's critical. What advice would you give to all of us, right? I mean, where we are in life and, you know, the call that we have on our lives to follow Christ. What advice do you give to men who are believers, but, you know, just wanting to live it all for the glory of God? I think if we just did, if we did one thing bar none is our our daily tea time with the Lord Mm. protect that with everything that you are Mm. well Scott man I go running out of the house you know a guy came to me and said Scott I'm just so busy Mm -hmm. family business everything is blowing up to seriously carve out 15 minutes are you kidding me I said hey uh, I'll just use um, Jim as the name yeah if there's any gyms here, you know, know that you're off the hook. Um, I said, hey, Jim, I, I don't know if I told you, but next Saturday I have a tee time at Augusta National. He's a big golfer. And I said, I, I got an open spot. He goes, are you kidding me? Augusta National? I said, yeah, but it's a 5 a.m. tee time. He goes, 5 a.m.? I'll be there at 4. I said, Jim, are you telling me for a tee time you'll show up at 4 a.m. to play a golf course, but you will not show up in the morning to spend time with your heavenly father? 
I did not say that. That was all God. Mm. And he now spends 15 minutes a day, uh, you know, and wherever we can start, if it's five minutes, give God five. Yeah. Just get started. Yeah. And it's not so much the, the quantity, it's just quality. It's God, speak to me today. Lord, give me one verse that I can apply to my life. He will answer that yeah. simple prayer. He'll meet you where you're at. But we just got to get started. That one thing, we, we can't miss that because that's our, our, it's our vine of life. That yeah. if we stay clinging to the vine yeah. uh, in John 15, yeah. the, the fruit will come. Yeah. Will there be pruning? Will there be some branches trimmed? Yes. Will it hurt? Yes. Lord, that was a big branch you just trimmed. <laughs> But it's in order to prune to produce more fruit Amen. down the road. I love it. I mean, I think you're exa- I mean, that's it. It comes back to that fundamental. Yeah. That's just the time with the Lord. So, Scott, what do you want your legacy to be? True. <laughs> you did the rocking chair test, at, you know, yeah. Daddy, but what do you, what do you want that legacy to be? You know, I just laid my dad to rest this past year. You know, I see his tombstone of, you know, May 3rd, 1930 you know, to November 15th, 2016. And it's really about that dash. Mm. What are you going to do in the dash? And I would pray that when they lay me to rest, that this man lived a life in his grip and helped a whole bunch of other men do the same. Mm. I, just that simple. Amen. Amen. Man, I love it. Praise God. Hey, we've got some questions for you, if that's okay. Sure. I love it. Thomas? Okay, Scott, uh, first question here. What are two to three things I can do daily to draw closer to Christ beyond praying, devotionals, and reading Scripture? Mm-hmm. Um, I love music, and so when I'm in the car, uh, it's kind of, it, it's a choice. Yeah. You know, you, you can go to the sports talk, and, and yeah, I do some of that, of course, but um, I just love, you know, I love music. Mm-hmm. So um, Micah is into Toby Mac, and if it's got a beat to it, part of his culture is dance. Yeah. My backseat gets a workout with him moving and, and just groove into the music, and it's so fun to watch and be a part of that. And so, you know, music's another way, and I just intentionally line up uh, coffees, lunches with other men mm. um, that I know will sharpen me, that are not afraid to speak that truth. And so, just being intentional. Uh, for me, music, and then just making sure that there's some of those coffee lunch meetings that, with other guys, for sure. I love that word intentional, because yeah. I, I think that's where we kind of get caught up and we drift along, right? Mm-hmm. Unless we stop and say, what am I listening to? Yeah. Or, hey, I'm going to take the initiative to shoot an email to somebody and let's mm-hmm. get together and have a lunch or a coffee. Yeah. Um, you've got to be intentional in that if you're going to grow, if you're going to put the right things in your mind and yeah. in your heart. Indeed. Yeah. Great word. Great yeah. word. Good question. <laughs> Okay, we got another one here. Uh, question two, what would you say to men who are trying to balance work, home, and play? Mm. That's a really, really good one and a really challenging one. Uh, for me, I look at the early morning that we all can carve out that time, you know, with the Lord and just be there with our family. So uh, my tea time is 5.30, and Micah is an early... He's an early bird, so he's up at six. And I want him to see daddy Mm. with his Bible open, seeking after God each and every day. I want to be that example for him to follow. And it's been amazing to watch his heart just get more tender uh, for God's word. And uh, a lot of it comes through song for him, but just to set that example. And so we're traditional. (laughs) <laughs> and we still do breakfast, you know, as a family um, for the majority of the days of the week. We still do dinner at the dinner table. And I know that's not doable for all, all guys here and the ones listening, but that is structured time that is non-negotiable. You know, we still have Friday night's family night, and it varies of what we do, but uh, you've got to schedule it. Mm. And, you know, it's probably an intentional word again of that. And... Um, like, well, Scott, you probably play a lot of golf on the weekends. Uh, I don't play any golf on the weekends. Mm. Saturday is soccer Saturday. You know, it's, it's Micah's passion. He's gifted at it. So Leslie and I are there cheering him on. I'm assistant soccer coach with zero background of soccer, so that's hilarious. And, and Sunday's our, our family day mm. to, uh, you know, do church and kind of restore our souls of a little bit of R&R. Mm. And so we're just... 
those are some non-negotiables for us. It's hard, it's challenging to balance that out. Yeah. But um, you can do it with other guys helping you, you know, yeah. in that. Well, you get the big blocks in first. And you I do. love how you talked about your tea time at 5.30. And yeah. I remember being a, a little kid. I don't even remember how old I was. You know, seven or eight. But one of my first memories is coming into my dad's room early in the morning. And, and, and mom was, you know, getting ready. And yeah. dad was on his knees praying. Mm-hmm. And, and I said, dad, what are you doing? And mm-hmm. he said, I'm praying for you. Wow. And I, that's just always stuck with me. I mean, yeah. all these years later, you know, yeah. I think my dad was praying for me. So mm-hmm. I think it's dad's. Mm-hmm. Man, that's... That's the example we, we should set right so, there. Yeah, it's so. a huge calling. Oh, huge, huge calling. responsibility. Yeah, and um, I don't want anybody else um, raising up my child than than Leslie and I. No. You know, I mean, we set the example. And there's a guy that's challenged me recently, and I, I don't know if this will resonate with you guys, but he said, Scott, you are called to set the thermostat of your faith in your household. Mm. If it's lukewarm, your family will be lukewarm. If it's cold. It's going to be cold. I want to be on fire. Yeah. And people walk in our house, I want them to feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. Mm. And that's a daily challenge. Yeah. But I do believe as men, we are called to set that thermostat. Yeah. And I do not want to be warm. I want to be on fire. Ah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, let me pray for us right now. And then yeah. Thomas has some words to share with us. Father God, I just thank you for Scott. I thank you for his heart for you, God, his passion for you. And Father, I just echo that, God. I want our family to be on fire for you. And God, as men, we are the spiritual leaders of our home. (laughs) And God, there's so many things that war against us, God. And I I just uh, rebuke Satan in the name of Jesus, Father. I pray that you would give us just a passion for your name and for your glory. Mm -hmm. I pray that you would bless us, Father. I pray you bless our marriages, Father. Bless us as dads. Help us to be men after your heart. And so, God, thanks for today, the way that you've spoken through Scott, the way you've challenged all of us, God, um, to walk with you every day. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, we yield our lives to you. And, God, we want to follow you. We want Mm -hmm. you to be first, the Lord of our life. And we dedicate every day to you. Mm -hmm. We want to live (laughs) in your grip. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. 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 Awesome. Praise God. Awesome. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate that. Round of applause for Scott. Really great. Hey guys, uh, just a reminder, we'll send out a MLN Rewind email uh, this afternoon. You should receive it if you're on the uh, email list. It'll recap this morning with some uh, additional links to uh, past podcasts as well as all the other interviews that we've done. It's a great easy way once you get that link. If, if something Scott said uh, resonated with you or you thought of another man in your life that you want to share that with, it's a real easy way just to forward that email along and, and, and give, uh, give those individuals access to today's content as well as all the other great content that we have on the website. Uh, I want to introduce uh, or want to tee up our, uh, our speaker for next week. You don't want to miss next week. Peter Goodwin is going to come and speak with us. Peter is an Alaskan adventure guide, and he's the founder of Groove Life, which is some of the uh, wearable kind of rubber wedding rings that you're seeing, uh, bands that you're seeing uh, a lot of men wearing these days. Peter's going to share some of his stories from the time he spent in wild Alaska and his hunger for adventure with leadership lessons that he's learned while also starting that successful business, Groove Life. Uh, We'll get started with breakfast at 6.30 and then we'll kick off again at 7 o'clock. Hope you can join us.